Hello and welcome to the workout. Today we've got full body plus cardio. So we're gonna be working more in what I like to call monster sets. It's three exercises put together, no rest in between, then we take a rest. We're gonna do two strength exercises with a cardio move for each monster set. Now listen, this is a bit of cardio and on the strength exercises, I want you challenging yourself where the last two repetitions are truly challenging. That's how you're gonna get stronger. That's how you're gonna build that awesome, gorgeous lean muscle mass. Your job is to count 12 repetitions for each exercise where those last two repetitions are challenging. So you might need some heavier workloads, weight loads, apparatus, bands, dumbbells, etc. You do need a circular hip band for one of our exercises today. And we're gonna be doing a lot of dumbbells today. If you've got a surface like a bench or a step, that will be helpful, but you don't absolutely have to have it. Um, and that's it. Let's get it started. So let's go through a little bit of warm up. Take your feet separated. And we're just gonna come into some spinal twists first. So if you're new to my workout, or if you're watching this on playback, um, I go through a series of moves here at the beginning of the workout, which, you know, colloquially, we would call it a warm up, but it's not really a warm up. It's really more to get your body prepared for the workout. So it's a proprietary series of movements based on movement patterns so that your bod is ready to get the most out of the strength workout. Squeeze your glute as you turn away from that leg because we want some spinal rotation. It's so good to just allow a little bit of that um, stickiness to undo through this move, just to let go, open up the belly, open up the hips, and relax. Take your feet under your hips. Take your arms up over your head, just natural and comfortable, okay? On go, I want you to lift up as high as you possibly can, and go. Lengthen yourself up as long and as high as you possibly can. Your job is to think about stretching the space from your rib cage to your hip or from your fingertips to your toes as long as possible. Short little breaths. Don't hold your breath, but you won't, you won't be breathing normally either. And relax it down. Catch your breath, relax your arms, and we're gonna do that again. This is an exercise for the transverse abdominis. If you really actively reach up as high as possible, it activates that transverse abdominis, which draws your abdomen inward. It's a really great muscle to fire up before a workout. Let's go, because this is the muscle that really braces your core. This is the muscle where it's important for spinal support. And when we talk about working on the core, it's really this muscle that we're working on. So long, 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 really, really reach, make it, aggressive, make it real, make it effortful, short little breaths and relax. Take your feet separated. Take a look down at your feet and your feet should be truly parallel to each other. So make sure that your feet are legitimately parallel. Bend your knees, body weight on your heels, push your hips back. You should already feel your glutes fire and your hamstring stretch just in the starting position. And then we go side to side. So you hold that hip extension, that hip hinge on the back. You hold that so that the glutes and the hamstrings are in charge of this move. Once your body starts to open up and those inner thighs get that little bit of stretch, let's sit a little deeper. You can come as deeply as it works for your body. You can also stay a little more upright if that feels better. And you can move faster or slower than me based on what your body needs. So this is just a preparatory sequence. So you wanna be listening in, what does your body need? Does it feel good to sit deeper? Does it feel better to stay a little high and just get a gentle, active dynamic stretch on the inner thighs. We're also firing up and activating the glutes and the hamstrings here. So good. Oh, so good. Let's do two more. Opening up those hips, firing the glutes. And relax. Bring your feet together. Bend your knees. And I want you to add in that first exercise where you actively reach and then come back into a runner's lunge. 
Step forward, actively release, reach, sorry, and step back, other side. And repeat, actively reach, lunge. Actively reach, lunge. If you get this, and you really get that active reach, it's amazing what it does for alignment, for your back, for your core. Active reach, so that transverse abdominus fires before we come into this reverse movement. It's really pretty brilliant because it fires up the core and it puts the pelvis in a great position to really get a stretch on that hip flexor. Letting your back knee just very gently tap down so that you get that hip flexor opening. Big reach. One more. And relax. Bring your feet together. Lower your center of gravity. Keep your knee bent, keep your knees bent, okay? Definitely wanna bend your knees. Then, bring your body weight onto one leg, keeping it bent. If your body wants to straighten that knee, if you have a hard time not straightening this knee, if you have a hard time staying here, that is proof and an indication that you need to work on this. Stabilizing balance with a bent knee. If that's easy for you, look around your space, okay? Look around your space to intentionally throw your balance off. One of the best exercises you could do every single day. Don't overlook it, even though it seems silly. When you get it, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's powerful if you keep that knee bent. Let your foot grab. Let your foot arch. It strengthens the foot, the toes, the ankle, the lower leg, the knee, the hip, everything. Core, balance, so great. Gets those glutes fired up real nice and relax. Same thing on the other side. Start with your feet together, bend your knees, find your balance. If you have a tendency to rotate away, which is super common, that's an indication that your hamstring is weak on that leg. And so you wanna push your knee out to the side and you wanna make sure the knee stays bent. That's gonna to start to fire up that hamstring. So if you rotate either direction, either direction, and you have a hard time staying squared off, I want you to really work on just holding this, pushing that knee out. Our first exercise today is gonna to help you do that. If you feel the arch of your foot grabbing, you're doing it right. If you have a tendency towards fibromyalgia or um, plantar fasciitis, anything that's inflammation related to the muscles around the foot, this is a great exercise to do. Just be a little conservative with it. If those muscles start burning a lot, just tap down and give yourself a little bit of a break. Do make sure you keep that knee bent. One leg's gonna be easier than the other. I feel awesome. So good. And relax. Let's do world's greatest stretch. My favorite. So you're just gonna drop back into a runner's lunge. Scoop up, turn towards the, keep your balance, turn towards your leg in the front bringing one hand back to the heel, one hand to the front knee. Enjoy that stretch for three to five seconds, and then we'll switch sides. Scooping up, stepping forward, stepping back. Turn, scoop up, turn towards the leg that's in front. So if your right leg is in front, you turn to your right. Hand back to the heel and enjoy. If this feels awesome. You can also come into an arch. It's extra good to keep that back toe tucked. It's really where you should be. And switch. Let's do three on each side. Scooping up, turn, hand to the heel. You can keep your hand up. You can put your hand on your knee. You can arch back. Whew, whatever feels awesome. And scoop forward. Second on this side, scoop up. Three on each side, hand back, reaching, or hand on the knee. Again, whichever feels best. Three to five seconds or so, and you can certainly hold it longer if you want. And let's do one more 
on each side. Keep that back toe really tucked under because it puts the pelvis in a certain position and it also helps you to get into this hip flexor a little better. There is a rotation as you're twisting and turning. There's an opening on the hip. It's really great to activate quadratus lumborum in your back, otherwise known as QL. It's one of your postural muscles. It's the muscle that tends to get pulled during workouts. And so this is a great move when you're holding in this position here and here, you're actually activating that muscle. And so it's good to just get it firing before we get into the proper workout. So good. So we got full body plus cardio. We're gonna do strength exercises for all the major muscle groups of the body. Step forward. And I want you to come down into a little bit of a crouch. If this is easy for you, dip your knees to the floor, sit on your toes. If this is not easy for you, for me it's not, you're going to keep your feet together and just rock back and forth, putting some pressure and maybe a little bit of discomfort onto your toes, your toe joints, the forefoot. And if you go, oh, this is so painful, I have arthritis in my toes, you need to do it more. And yes, this is one of those times when that discomfort and that pain, you wanna kind of lovingly, gently lean into. I'm not talking no pain, no gain, but I am encouraging you to open up the mobility of that joint. And sometimes on some joints, we actually have to lean into that discomfort. And this is one of those times. One more. Slowly come up. As you get there, lift your knees 10 times. This is so that you don't get dizzy. And we're gonna get into our workout. We're starting with a circle hip band and a dumbbell exercise with a cardio move. Let me show you the three moves so that if you wanna get out ahead of me and go faster, you can. First exercise is going to be our lateral band step. Grab your circle hip band, stretch it, step in above your knees. Go ahead and get that set up now while I demonstrate. So first exercise is lateral band step, 12 and 12 back, okay? Your band should be challenging. Second exercise is a dumbbell side raise. Third exercise, are you ready? Jumping jack with the band. How about that? It's gonna be a good one. Okay, so let's get this started. Grab your circle hip band, feet together, lower your center of gravity so your knees are bent. You always wanna start every exercise with unlocked knees. Body weight on the heel, a little neutral arch in your lower back. Nice big step, leading with your whole foot, whole leg. 12 steps. Listen, if 12 is easy, the next thing is not to do more. The next thing is to get a heavier resistance band or take a bigger step or sit deeper. So if you're here, if you're finding me on YouTube, or if you're finding me on your blog, on my blog, not on your blog, on my blog, <laughs> and this is your first time to my workout, if you say, oh, that exercise isn't very hard, that exercise is easy, I'm gonna call you out because that means you're not challenging yourself with your apparatus because I can crush you on this exercise if you do it the right way. So anytime you get to that point where you're like, that exercise is too easy, that's on you and I invite you to really challenge yourself with a harder workload. Grab those dumbbells, dumbbell side raise, knees bent, shoulders back and down. Neutral, natural bit of a curvature at your elbow. Depending on your skill level, a little bit of a pause at the top. Pause at the top. Now, if your weight load is heavier and you're really working on building muscle, if you're working on getting stronger, you might want to eliminate that pause. So if your weight load is hard, you got to get in and get out. 12 repetitions, please count. This is your workout. You're responsible for your progress. Abs tight, it should be 12 challenging. Then you keep that hip band on 
And we've got jumping jacks for 30 seconds. Feet together, ready, here we go. Jumping jacks, here is where you can start. If you need modified, stepping. If you don't want intensity or any kind of impact, this is awesome. And if you want super high energy, bring those arms all the way up. 30 seconds, whichever works for you. Give me more energy. Make it bigger. Get the heart rate up. This is cardio and relax. Walk it out. Please don't stay in place. You can just keep your headband on. Okay, walk it out, move around. 30 seconds rest. And then we're gonna repeat what we just did for a second set. If you want a harder workout today, you're gonna do three sets. Okay, so we've got five cardio segments, five monster sets of three exercises each. We do those twice. So it's a total of five times three is 15 times two, 30 sets today. In total, 30 sets of exercises, okay? So short rest, the point of this rest is to let your intensity come down, let your heart rate come down, so that when you come back to your next set, you work harder. That's actually the point of the rest. If you're like, I don't need the rest. You're not working hard enough in your set. You should need 30 seconds or more. I want you to need that 30 seconds so that you're about 70% recovered for the next set, okay? Are you ready? Let's get into position for our next set. If the last one was a little easy, consider increasing the resistance of your circle hip band or increasing the weight of your dumbbells for your side raise. Feet together, bend your knees, hips back, body weight on your heels, step with the whole foot. You should feel flexion at your ankle. You should feel a bending at the ankle. You should feel your feet grabbing and the arches of your feet grabbing, just like on that preparatory exercise, okay? If you're doing this right, it really should be challenging. I remember when I first started practicing this exercise, my glute medius was weak. And it was so hard for me. This exercise was so hard. And I worked at it, and I worked at it, I worked at it, and then I started having better technique, getting a heavier band. Now it's to the point where like, I really have to put my body into the right position and use the right band. And I feel it, Ooh, I feel it. 12 in each direction. And once you get those in, we go right into our dumbbell side raise. Feet together, knees bent. Roll your shoulders back. Slight bend in the elbows, straight out and down. Pausing if your weight load is moderately challenging. Moderately challenging, give me a pause because it really fires up medial deltoid. Such a great way to increase the time under tension. So good. Making your shoulders look awesome. And like I said, if you're using a heavier weight load, you can get in and out of the exercise. If you've got eight or 10 pounds or more here, you might need to get in and get out. 12 reps, getting ready for those jumping jacks. 30 seconds. Leave your circle hanging on. It just adds an element of challenge to this move. Be ready, pick your version. 30 seconds, here we go. Here is your low impact, which ends up being a great, great glute move because of the hip band, moderate intensity. You can go slower, higher intensity. Just make it bigger. You can also make it faster. Thirty seconds, and walk it out. Short break. If you want a harder workout today, if you're familiar with my workouts, 
go for it. Give yourself about 20 to 30 seconds rest. And then you're gonna do that monster set again, okay? Then I'm gonna show you the next two exercises. Go ahead and remove your hip band. This is my second workout in a row today. I had a workout right before this recording. So you will see me relying on my water more than usual today. So, uh, second monster set, curtsy squat. Tricep dip, ideally from a chair, a couch, a bench, a stair. You can do it on the floor. Third cardio is skiers. And let me show you. Skiers, starting separated, swap, swap, swap. If you want low intensity, step back. Okay, and you can do this fast. Even though it's not low intensity, it's actually low impact because it can still be high intensity at low impact. Curtsy squat, if you're using a dumbbell, it's here. Please make sure that you are cautious and careful with this bottom position. If you have funky knees, do not use a dumbbell. Hand on the front knee. If you have funky knees for your curtsy squat, tricep dips from a bench or chair, 12 repetitions. If it's easier, you're gonna make it a bigger movement or put a dumbbell across your hips. You guys ready? Let's go curtsy squat. So like I said, funky knees, don't hold a dumbbell. I will demonstrate. Start with your feet together, then the knees, and you're gonna step around, hand on the front knee, other side, 12 each side. So if you've got funky knees in any way, please perform it this way. I love this exercise and it's a bit complicated on that front knee. So I need you to really listen up, listen to how that front leg feels. It should feel good. If it doesn't feel good, please do it this way until it feels good. For me, I used to have, I had really bad knees in my 20s. Now my knees are better than they ever were in my entire life. And this exercise feels so good, but it took me a long time to get here. When you do get to the point where this feels good, you can then add the dumbbell, either one at your chest, or you can even hold two at your side, depending on your fitness level, depending on how your knees respond. Dipping all the way down, until the back knee comes very close to the floor, or depending on your limb length, you can even tap your knee down. Tap your knee down, okay? If you're five, six or shorter, you can definitely tap your knee down. If you're taller or have particularly long legs, you might not tap your knee down, okay? Second exercise, tricep dip, bench, step, chair, dining room chair, whatever you have. If you don't have that, you can do this from the floor. Feet together, knees bent, hips just off your bench. Straight down, straight up, super big, super high. If this is easy, please, I want you to make your movement bigger. Pushing your chest super high, keeping your tailbone close to your bench. Super high. Dropping down to where your upper arm is just above parallel to the floor, or if you've got super healthy shoulders, you can drop down to upper arm parallel to the floor. I would not go below parallel. So on the camera, here's parallel. I would not want you to come all the way down here. This is where we get into shoulder problems parallel or above parallel at the bottom for 12. Moving into our ears. Feet together. Separate. You ready? Okay. 30 seconds. You can make this moderate. You can make this low impact, but still, this might be moderate intensity for you. You can move fast here. Okay? You can also make this super high intensity by taking those arms really big. Whatever works for you for today. Or you say, get that heart 
heart rate up. Get that heart rate up. If you feel good, I want you to work harder today. Big push and walk it out. If you feel good, if you've got high energy, I want you to really challenge yourself on these cardio segments. Give yourself a good challenge, a good push, and then you should need the 30 seconds of rest. You should need it. If you don't, I want you to work harder on this next set. So if curtsy squat felt good for you, grab a five pound dumbbell. If a five pound dumbbell felt good, grab five in each hand. Let's go heavier dumbbells or a barbell. You got lots of options here. One is not better than the other. They're just different. And it's all about putting your body into the effort level that feels productive, safe, but challenging, okay? So we want all three of those conditions. So it really should be and, and, and. Feet together, knees bent, dumbbell at your chest, 12 on each side, feel it out. If you are increasing your weight load here from the first to the second set, make sure you feel out the first few repetitions here with that new weight load. Oh, feels good. It's a great exercise if it's a great exercise, right? It's a great exercise if it's a great exercise for your body, and it might not be. So, hand on the front knee is great. It's a really great way to get into this more complicated movement pattern. When I create training programs offline, not these live workouts. I have never programmed this into any of my programs before. Not a huge fan of a curtsy squat, really. But the nature of this workout requires, has different requirements, right? We're a bit more limited, so I have to get a bit more creative. Okay, try some It's one of those exercises, curtsy squat, where it's like, the concept of it is great, and like I said, if you can do it well, it's awesome. But it's a bit risky. Feet together, knees bent, hands at your hips. I don't want you saying, yeah, but I learned from so-and-so to keep my knees straight. This is just a dumb way to do this exercise. Sorry to call anybody out, but it is. Knees bent because it unlocks your hips. When your hips are unlocked, you've got better mechanics in your upper body. So no straight legs. You can come to one foot if you want. I'm fine with that. You also wanna keep your hips pretty close to your bench so that you're not moving forward and back. It's down and up, down and up. Elbows back, coming to the depth that's right for your arm length. 12 reps, if it's not hard enough, you can put a dumbbell at your hips if you're gonna do a third set. Skiers, second set. Low intensity, no. Low impact can still be moderate intensity. Or, let's go, moderate intensity. If you prefer high intensity, make it bigger. Big movements with those arms. Bigger movements with the legs. Whatever is right for you today. want this or you should need the recovery yeah you should need it and if you're loving this workout and your energy is good and you're healthy go for a third monster set give yourself at least 20 seconds rest 
I want you to want 30 seconds rest, but 20 could do it if you need to. Let me show you our third monster set. Oh, it's a favorite. And I got a new move for you. So listen up, you do need a bench, a piano bench. You could do this on your couch. You could do this on a dining room chair. You could do it on a footstool. There's a lot of apparatus you could use for this. So I hope you have something. Otherwise, you're gonna have to get creative and try to modify. I will do my best to dem demonstrate. First exercise, lying dumbbell pullover with chest fly. I'll show you real quick. Heavier dumbbell, because this is a back exercise. Shoulders towards your hips. Lying dumbbell pullover. If you know me, you know, you know. This is my beloved right here. Oh, I could just do it all day long. It's the best exercise. Everyone should be doing this exercise. Everyone, it's so brilliant for back, triceps, abs, core. Second exercise, imagine I have two dumbbells. It's a dumbbell chest fly. Dumbbell chest fly, okay? Third exercise for your cardio segment. This is where it's challenging if you don't have a bench. Um, hands are on your bench. This is how you would do it on a couch or a chair. Your hands would be on the end and you're just gonna hop side to side. This is option one, hopping side to side. Okay, if you have a proper bench, your mid bench, make sure you give yourself some space for hopping up and over, up and over, okay? Now, even if you do have a bench, you can make it smaller here if you're more comfortable. If you have back issues, knee issues, hip issues, if you feel a little unstable, keep it small. And if you have a bench and you feel athletic and strong, jump over your bench. Okay, lying dumbbell pullover is first. This can handle a heavier weight load. In Holly's Utopia, every woman would be doing this with at least 15 pounds. So your first goal is to be able to do 12 repetitions with 15 pounds on this exercise. That's what I consider the bare minimum, okay? Then in order to really be optimally strong, you'd work up to 25, 30, 35 pounds. I mean, the most I've done, I think I did 45 pounds on this exercise at one point when I was in peak physical ability. So at least 15 pounds. And if you're at 10 today, that's okay. Work up to it. 12 reps. If 12 reps is comfortable or doable, take your weight load up. Second set. Second exercise is a dumbbell chest fly moderate weight dumbbells, okay? Moderate, shoulders to your hips, shoulders to your hips, shoulders back and down. Slight bend at the elbow, opening out. You can do this on the floor. Both of these exercises that I've just done, you can do these on the floor. Then when we get to the bench hops, um, grab at literally anything that's at the height of your hips or your knees. So like I said, it could be, um, your couch, dining room chair, kitchen chair, um, love seat, piano bench, anything. And just something to put your hands on so that you can hop from left to right, okay? We haven't done that here in this workout before. I don't know why. It's a great little cardio exercise. 12 reps here, doesn't that feel awesome? And then to get out of it, dumbbells to your chest, Use your legs to just give you a bit of momentum. Dumbbell safely down. And get into position for your 30 seconds of bench hops. Remember, I can't stress this enough. Imagine this is a, a kitchen chair. I could even probably pull my chair over and demonstrate. Put your hands here. You can literally, feet together, knees bent. Let's go. You can hop just side to side here. It can be this. Hands just need to be on a stable surface. And if that is totally doable and you wanna go higher intensity, let's go up over the bench, okay? Faster or slower, whatever works for you.
30 seconds. Walk it out when you hit that 30, about now. Walk it out. Interesting thing about bench hops, they're actually harder if you slow them down a bit. They're easy. If you bounce, 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 they get a little easier. So I invite you to just see what it feels like to do them a little slower, more deliberately. It's a lot on those quads because you have to catch yourself. There's a deliberate catch on each side. Whoo, you'll feel those thighs, okay? If you're here with me in playback, watching this as a recording, this is taped live. I've got today, I can't see, 28, I think? 28 friends are here with us live. If you want to ever join us for a live workout, come to my website, hollyperkins.com forward slash free workout. The link is below and you can sign up to join us totally free on a Saturday or you can just watch some playback. Okay, short break. And we're gonna go back into second set. If that first set of lying dumbbell pullover felt good, let's go heavier. Grab a weight load, it's challenging for you. 15, 12, 10, 25, wherever you are and wherever your apparatus is, whatever equipment you have now, an idea for you is to take this workout on recording to a gym, if you work out at a gym, and then you've got more access to equipment, and then you can just watch the recording, hit pause when you need to, and then you've got access to more dumbbells, more apparatus, barbells, bench, whatever you need. That's an idea if you're watching in playback. I know these days, the vast majority of my community prefers to work out at home. And so I definitely create these workouts to be done with some home gym equipment. Obviously you need some equipment, um, but you could do it at your gym if you want. Okay, grab those dumbbells for dumbbell chest fly. Uh, light to moderate weight load here. If you've ever had a shoulder injury, I encourage you to start a little bit more light. If you've ever had a shoulder injury, this is actually a fabulous exercise. And I personally really learned the value of this exercise when I injured my shoulder doing push-ups. I went through physical therapy. I've gone through so much physical therapy, by the way. I went through physical therapy, and this is one of the exercises that we worked on to really rehab my left shoulder. And that's when I realized how great this exercise is for general strengthening. But believe it or not, for shoulder health and stability, it's a chest exercise. But when you really work it, shoulder blades together here. Oh, it's so good for shoulder stability. So good. All right, you ready for your cardio segment? Round two, pick your poison. If you want more moderate intensity, okay? I do encourage you, even if you want low impact, I do encourage you, are you ready? Let's go. I do encourage you to give me a little bit of a hop, even if you want lower intensity, sorry, lower impact. The reason is impact is actually a good thing. Impact is a good thing. It's how you strengthen your bones. Impact right there is where you're strengthening your bones. So I want all my clients doing some impact, but it can be very conservative, conscious impact. It doesn't have to be super, super high impact, but some is what stimulates osteoblast activity and that's what improves your bone density in addition to lifestyle changes. Short break, let me show you our next monster set. So you will need something to step up onto. 
It could be stairs in your house. It could be a dining room chair, exercise bench, exercise block or step. We are doing step ups, okay? Step ups, body weight or loaded, leading with your left, 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 left for 12. Then we'll do right for 12. Dumbbells, hammer curl. Hammer curl is palms facing each other, shoulders back and down, palms facing each other. Dumbbell hammer curl, cardio, squat jumps. Feet separated, shoulder widths distance apart, squat jumps small for impact or big, depending on the intensity that you need today. Like I just said, even if you believe you should be doing no impact, I want you to do a little bit, do a little bit of a hop. Safe, 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 a little bit of a hop, so good for you. All right, bench step up, body weight or loaded, five pound dumbbells in each hand or more. I'd love for you to be up at about 10 pounds in each dumbbell, uh, 10, 10 pounds in each hand, each dumbbell or more. Feet together, knees bent. Here we go, 12. Leading with that left. Left, 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 left. It's called leading or cycling. Whole foot on the bench, very deliberate. Really great to improve your body's ability to change levels. Actually moving your body upward in space. This is gonna make you better at climbing stairs. It also makes you better at going down stairs if you have knee issues. 12 and same on the right leg. Reset, feet together, knees bent, right up right down, chest stays tall, keep your posture up, safety first, keep an eye on your toes as you come up and down. Once you get the feel for where your bench is, it's ideal if you could look forward, but make sure that your toes are clearing your bench. You can move faster. Just make sure it's safety first, always. 12, hammer curl next. Dumbbell, hammer curl. Shoulders back, chest forward. Give me a pause at the top. 12 reps. Ideally, eight pounds at least. Ideally, in a perfect world, 15 to 20 pounds. Because this is a cardio-influenced workout, you might need lower weight loads because of that cardio segment. It increases the overall intensity of the workout. But still want you aiming to challenge yourself here for 12 reps. All right, cardio, squat jumps. Feet about hip distance apart. Hands over your chest-ish. Okay, here we go. You can make it moderate, little jumps. You can take your time. You can make it bigger. You can make it faster. As high as you can, super high. All the way up, lead with your chest. Really big. Challenge yourself. Get that heart rate up. Safety first, always, all the way up. Big jump, big jump, big jump. Two more. Walk it out. Nice. Short recovery. Make those bones strong. Walk it out. A little recovery. 20 to 30 seconds. 
I'd like it. If you need 20, that'd be great. I'm sorry, 30. That'd be great if you need 30, but you should need 20 at a minimum. And then we're gonna repeat that monster set. Bench step ups into hammer curl, into squat jumps. And then we've got one more monster set after that. Have a drink of water, evaluate. How did that set of bench steps feel? If it was doable, let's go heavier. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Okay, you ready? Second set, bench step ups. Again, left up, left down, leading, leading, leading on your left. Feet together, knees bent to begin. Super tall, good posture to start. Safety first, watch those toes. 12. Please count your repetitions. I know you're used to coming to a class like this and the instructor spoon feeds you. I know that. But you are no longer a little baby. You are a grown woman. And I want you to count your repetitions. 12, you are responsible for your fitness and your health. And I want you to be knowledgeable about how many repetitions and about keeping your repetitions equal on a unilateral exercise like this. 12 on the left, so you got 12 on the right to keep yourself balanced. One more, same thing on the other side. Take a moment to reset, feet together, knees soft. Always set yourself up, beginning with specificity and being deliberate. Leading with that whole foot, whole foot up on the bench. I don't wanna see any feet hanging off. I see that all the time. Oh my goodness. I see that on YouTube. Other people demonstrating this exercise. Oh, Lordy Lord. Whole foot on the bench. It's a lot safer. I just don't even see any application where you don't put your whole foot on the bench. 12 hammer curls. Shoulders back and down. Grab a heavier dumbbell if you need it, or a lighter dumbbell. Shoulders back and down, chest lifted. Hammer curl, giving me an isometric contraction at the top. This isn't a rest position here. Squeeze your biceps. You're stopping short where you can really squeeze the bicep. Press your shoulders towards your hips, especially at the top right here. When you do that, you're gonna feel your abs fire up. I'm gonna tell you, my abs get ripped when I'm focusing on my technique with exercises like this, without even doing any ab exercises, simply by shoulders back and down, and by all of the hip and knee positioning that I talk about, if you brace your core, you're gonna get an incredible looking midsection. You don't have to do ab exercises. You really don't. I include them, people love them. I do think there's a time and a place for them, but they're not absolutely essential for strong core. They're not. All right, squat jumps, you ready? All right, make your decision. Small, medium, or extra large. Your intensity is up to you. Here's your small, little baby jump. Here's your small. I want you to get that impact. Here's your medium. 30 seconds, make it large. All the way up, high as you can, super high. Safety first, but give me some big intensity. Lead with your chest. You should feel those legs. Woo, woo, two more. Walk it out. You know, feel those legs, not awesome. Lots of quads and booty. Booty, booty, pop is the best. 
Nice. Keep walking, grab a sip of water, head into your third superset if you want. Let me show you our last monster set, last collection of three exercises. I'm gonna surprise you, those of you guys that are here live, walking lunges. We don't do walking lunges during the live workout hardly ever because we stick around for the workout after the workout and we do walking lunges after I stop the recording. But today we're doing walking lunges loaded. Dumbbell, dumbbell, 12 reps on each leg, 24 in total with an ab exercise. This is exciting. So dumbbells go down. You can either be on the floor for this next exercise or you can be on a bench. It's up to you. You can do this on the floor. Elbows into the ground, okay? Knees in, hold on, because that's not gonna be an attractive camera angle. Hold on one second. So elbows into the ground here. Knee, knee, legs, one leg at a time. We are lowering down, okay? Right here, alternating leg lowering for abs. And then our last cardio is the Mac Daddy of them all. Split squat jumps, okay? Small, medium, or large. I will go over that with you when we get there. Walking lunges first. Grab yourself some dumbbells because this is a loaded exercise. If you are new to my workout, if you're watching this in playback, if you don't practice walking lunges, you can do these body weight only. And if you've been with me before, I would encourage you to grab at least five pound dumbbells. Feet together, knees bent, shoulders back and down, 12 steps each leg. So there's one and one for 12, or you can count consecutive steps for a total of 24. Whatever works for you. Twelve steps. Make sure when you step together, I want you really activating the glute of the leg in front. So you step forward, squeezing your glute. Step, squeeze your glute. Here we go. Step, squeeze that glute. Squeeze that glute. It's so that you, one, activate your glute, but it's also so that you finish the move with your hip under you. Squeeze that glute right there. 12 on each leg, dumbbells down, split squat jumps. Small, medium, extra large. Starting with your feet separated, uh, we are Whoops, double hands, switching double hands. If you want a lower intensity, lower impact, small, make it fast. Okay, you guys ready? Here we go for medium, big jump. Don't forget the abs. Ah, thank you, thank you. Let's do this one and then we'll do abs. Thank you. Switching up the order. Okay, split squat jumps. Let's finish out this set for 30, and then we'll come back for the abs. Big jump, big jump, big jump. Make it bigger, and walk it out. Whew, those will get you. Take about 10 seconds for recovery. We'll do our abs, then on the next monster set, we'll go back to the appropriate order. Leg lowering next. Now remember, you can do this on the ground, you can do it on a bench, whichever works for you. I'm gonna do it on the bench because you'll be able to see me better, but it's absolutely equally effective on the ground. The key is that I really want you to make sure your elbows are anchoring into the ground, okay? Really anchor, push your elbows down, knee, knee, Legs, one at a time, here we go. You can keep a bend 
in the knee. If this is too challenging, bend your knees a little, okay? This might feel better on your back and depending on your flexibility, might be a little too challenging to keep the legs straight. 12 on each leg, 24 in total. Draw inward, inward on your abdomen. Remember how we did that activating core exercise at the very beginning? Pull on that here. Draw your abs in here so that you've got a nice, stable, locked off core. Twenty-four in total. So good. And rest here when you're done. We're going to take about ten seconds here if you're on the ground, knees bent, just a couple of seconds for recovery, and then I'll get you up off the ground. Please um, take your time coming off the ground. If you are a step ahead of me, just make sure when you come up off the ground or your bench, lift your knees ten times so you don't get dizzy. If you're on the ground, just roll to your side. If you're on your bench, you can just sit up. Either way, let's sit for a moment. Roll to your side and sit up. Come up, lift your knees 10 times. Okay, and we're gonna take our 20 to 30 second break here. 20, 20 30 seconds, and we're gonna do this monster set again, but in proper order. So, walking lunge into the ab exercise, and then we'll finish split squats. That's a great way to wrap up the workout. Great way. If you're here with me live, we got some walking lunges coming up. You're going to get some serious walking lunge time today. And if you are not here with me live, join us next time and you can stay for the workout after the workout. We do extended time bodyweight walking lunges for muscular endurance, not for strength. All right, you guys ready for our second and final monster set? Or if you're doing a third, that's great. If your walking lunges felt good, let's go ahead and grab a heavier weight load. So walking lunges, 24 steps in total, 12 on each leg. We lost your audio, Holly. Okay, and let's continue. So, as long as you finish that walking lunge with a glute squeeze here, squeeze your glute right there. Okay, 12 steps, each leg, 24 in total. Should be challenging. If it's not challenging, I want you to pick up heavier weight load so that you are really challenging yourself from the strength position. Audio is back, thank you for that. Short break, when you finish out those walking lunges, we are going to alternating leg lowering, either from the floor or from your bench. Whichever one, I'll do the, no, I don't wanna do the floor because you guys won't be able to see me. I'm gonna stay on the bench. If you're on a bench, if you noticed, I changed my position. You don't want your elbows at your joint, you want your hips and your back and your elbows on the flat part of the bench if you have an adjustable bench. One knee, one knee, both legs alternating. And again, modify this as you need to. Now, when you're on a bench, it can be a hair harder because you've got space underneath your foot to go a little extra lower here. You wouldn't have that on the floor. It doesn't necessarily make it better. 
makes it a little different. So the floor is good, even if you don't have a bench. But like I said, if you have like any kind of a, you know, furniture type bench, like a piano bench or a stool in your living room, something that's long enough that you can fit your torso on can work great for this exercise as an option. 12 on each leg, 24 in total. If you're limited by your flexibility, just bend the knees, okay? Making a little bit easier right there. Draw in through your abs, nice long legs, should be feeling it. And one more, knees together, depending on where you are, roll to your side or sit up. Take a moment, a couple of seconds, so that your blood pressure changes, so that your blood flow changes. Come up off the floor, lift your knees, 10 times, promise me you'll do this. And then we're gonna go into our final cardio segment. The big old monster split squats. Small, medium, extra large, you pick. Small, low impact can still be high intensity, whichever is right for you. All right, are you ready? 30 seconds, here we go. Finding the right speed, the right intensity, I want you to really use those arms and come up off the floor. Give me a big jump, big jump, all the way up. Spring with those legs. Lots of spring, lots of intensity. With those legs, pull those arms. Up, 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 up. Couple of seconds. And walk it out. Keep those legs moving. You should be feeling them. Woo-wee. Walk it out. I'm gonna take you through just a little bit of a cool down. We've got one stretch, and then I will send you off. Again, if you're here watching in playback, thanks for being here. If you ever wanna join us live, come to hollyperkins.com forward slash free workout, sign up. This doesn't happen anywhere on social media. It's a private Zoom link and you're welcome to join us. Okay, take your feet separated and let's come into that beginning spinal twist. Really relaxed here, okay? This is a great, great ending move because of all of the activity in this workout. You're gonna see your back, your torso and your core feel different right now as compared to when we did it as a warm up, right? You just feel a little bit more stiff through your back, your hips and your pelvis, right? That's a function of the workout. And so there is something to be said for doing some range of motion after your workouts. Not necessarily stretching, it doesn't have to be stretching, but range of motion is so good. Let's take a deep inhale up. Exhale, let's do that one more time. Big inhale up. Exhale it out and let's come into our quad stretch. If you need something for balance, find that now to stabilize you. Feet together, bend your knees, and you're gonna bring one heel up back behind you. Catch the front of your foot or your shoe or your pant leg or grab a belt. Relax here for a moment. <clears throat> Take a look down. Your knee is probably popping forward. So I want you to tuck your pelvis under, pull the knee back, take a look down, and your bent knee should be next to or behind your standing knee with your pelvis really tucked. Tuck your pelvis, tuck your pelvis, tuck your pelvis. Oh, it's good, it's good. The more you tuck your pelvis, the more you're gonna see the value of this exercise. And the tighter your quads are, the harder it's gonna to be to get into it. A way to know if your quads are tight, if you feel that stretch predominantly in your knee, that's an indication that your quads are super tight. So I want you to very gently, very lovingly work with this stretch every single day. Feet together, knees bent. Use something for stability. It's okay if you can't balance. No big deal, this exercise isn't about balance. So tuck your pelvis under, 
it's probably gonna push your knee forward, pull that knee back, okay? You're gonna feel your glute fire up. And if you're really doing this right, if you're doing this right, you're actually gonna feel your glute and your hamstring on this bent leg, grab. They might even cramp up a little bit. Just make sure that knee is back behind your standing knee. Oh, it's good. And I beg of you, perform the stretch every single day. If you're a woman, and there's a 99% chance you're a woman, so I have only women in my community, but I got a, I got a, I got a you know, guy here and there. Every woman should be doing this every single day. One of the most important stretches a woman can do. And relax. One more big inhale. Big life-affirming inhale. And nice relaxing exhale. Thank you so much for joining me. I will see you next time.